I don't want to take too much time. I understand Pastor Aguirre and the pastors have done a coup for me today. They want to do some birthday celebrations for me. Let me, let me appreciate them. Let me appreciate them. Put your hands together for them. Thank you so much, Yomi. Thank you so much. Let me appreciate them. It's, it's always good. I wasn't expecting anything. I just, my wife is waiting for me somewhere out there. She says, please find your way here. I don't want you in Lagos. I said, okay, sweetheart, I'll soon be with you so we can spend time together. But I have to preach on Sunday. I wish uh, my birthday were to be Tuesday so that I can find time to rest on Monday and then get out. But I have to do my primary assignment from heaven. It is important for me to try, challenge, and encourage your people. Praise God. I want to read two passages of scriptures. Luke 24, verse number 49. <clears throat> Luke 24, verse number 49. And I'll read Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through to 8. Then I will share my thoughts with you this beautiful morning on the title, Powered to Function. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Tarry, wait, until you are endued or empowered for, with power from one eye. Wait until you are powered. Wait until you are powered. Meaning you can't do it without being powered. Wait until you are what? Powered. Acts chapter 1 verses 6 through to verse number 8. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 when they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? When will you, when will we recover? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But you shall receive power. Or you shall be empowered. Or you shall be Powered after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. Father, I pray that your people will hear your voice, not mine, in the name of Jesus. You will help us to understand what it means to be powered to function. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name I pray. You may have your seat in God's presence. The greatest disservice or major issue in church is for us, and this is very important for me, and this is how many of us think when we think God. When we think God or church, and when we think the word power from God, power from God, power, God giving you power, you know anything like that, God empowering you, God giving you power. The greatest error, error, that Christians of my generation have preached and have thought about that word power is to assume that it only functions in the realm of the spirit, not in the natural realm. It's a very bad, it's a very bad thought. I'm not joking. When we hear the word power from God, God is empowering you. Immediately our minds think somehow spirit. Spiritual, not natural. I'll give you another example. So what that means is that we have believed somehow that God only, only, not this word, only operates not just from the realm of the spirit, but perhaps in the realm of the spirit. Now in this natural realm, when things happen, how things happen, it's, it's, you have to use your common sense, they call it. You have to do your own thing yourself. We have not perceived God or whatever God gives to us that it may function and help us to make progress, to succeed here on earth. So another generation of preachers came and started to cause what we used to think about power. Power, power is for you to speak in tongues, you to cast out devils, you to do deliverance, 
So when you go to church, you only think of power meetings, power services. When you leave church, something tells you all that power stuff is for that hall and that auditorium. Let me now go to the, watch me, watch me, the real world. Where that cannot work. What happens in the house, you cannot work here. Because I'm not supposed to go and cast out devils at work. <laughs> I'm not supposed to go and cast out. Or that power may not be to help me outside the church wall. So we've, we've confined God to say you can't do much in the real world. You only do a lot in the spiritual world. For that's why God is God. That's why God is God. God does not operate in the real world. He only in the spiritual world to cast out, to do, to deal with spiritual things in your life. To heal you when you're sick. To cast out devils when you're possessed. To do spiritual things in your life. When it comes to natural things, he's got no say, he's got no influence. So many of us don't know how to function. So for us to function, we start looking for help elsewhere. And that's a lie. Listen to me, everything that exists for it to make progress must be powered. Everything. This microphone is useless if I don't turn on the power. And I don't plug it somewhere up there. The air conditioners must be powered. The lights must be powered. The vehicles you drive must be powered. It's, it's called ignition. No matter how big, how expensive, it could be a Lamborghini, it could be a Rolls Royce, you pack it in there for a long time, you come back, not powered it, you try it, your battery has to power it, nothing will happen. You've got to power it. Anything that exists to function must be powered. Your TV set, your computer screens, you put on your iPad, if the battery power drains, nothing can happen. No matter the amount of information in that system, it's gone. Are you with me? I don't care how much, how much info you've got in your system, it's gone. Once it's not powered, it's gone. It's gone. So it has nothing to do with what you have on the inside. Some of you have got so much, you're so loaded, you have potentials, but you're not powered. Even, oh, you missed that. Your potential is strong. You're talented, gifted, but not powered. You're getting it. So, so that system, that computer system, can have Intel about 50,000 account details. You don't know it until you power it. There are some people that go to, say, what's your password? I say, I don't know my password for that. Let me go to my system. The system pulls it off for me, then I can function. Many of us don't understand that. Even God, the one that amazes me in that passage, said to his own people, his own disciples, watch me, I've loaded you with information, I've taught you, you're trained, you're mentored, you're tutored, you have great, great potentials, but you cannot take over the world without power. So tarry till I power you, oh God, like a microphone, like a speaker, I need to power you. So 120 people stayed in one room, it was 500 he told to tarry. In Acts chapter 1 and in Luke chapter 24, uh, he said to 500, but wait, wait, wait. By the time they found out in 1 Corinthians 15, 500 people saw him ascend to the heavenlies. By the time the power of God came to drop down, it was only 120 remaining. 120 remaining out of 500 that saw him the last day. So 120 people stayed there. Look at me. Those guys... Were ready, they had information, they had the world, they had experience, they had knowledge, they had worked with Christ, just, just, just sitting down doing nothing, praying because they were not powered. It's like a system would have been powered. Many years ago, we used to buy all kind of stage monitors and, and speakers. So one day, one man came and said, This one is powered. That's what you mean. He says, It's got its own amplifier within. The amplifiers, this, this speaker is powered. Now, there are some speakers that you need. It's separate amplifier to power. But this is powered speakers. I said, wow. So it's come with some power. Yes. What do you do? Just turn it on. <laughs> but if you don't turn it on, it's not powered. So we need to get to that point and say, look, what, how can I function? Many of us are there. We're not doing things. We're not achieving things. We're not making progress. Because some of us may not have been powered. Today I want to pray for you. I want to ask God to release you with the power of the Holy Ghost so you can go out of this church wall to go and function. Powered to function. You've got to function. You've got to do things. It's only doers that, be, that are achievers. 
Only doers are achievers. Paul told Timothy, ever learning, never knowing how to do things. Not learners. It's not what you know that makes you a winner. It's what you do. It's not what you know. The church is not supposed to be a school where you are taught. Mm -mm. It's supposed to be a training ground where you are mentored. There are two different things. So it's not an academic setting. When it does, our job is also pass knowledge. Mm -mm. Our job actually is to give you power to go and function or to power you. You know, our bodies, for instance, and doctors are here. I don't know which one. Our bodies are also power to function. Some say by the brain. If your brain shuts down, you become what? Vegetable. Some say you get numb. Some call it cardiac arrest. Some say the heart sends a message to the brain. The brain gives all the information to the body. The body moves this way, moves that way. The moment is the brain powering this thing you call body. If your brain shuts down, you're dead. Have you seen people alive, but they call them brain dead? Am I communicating? Doctor, am I right, sir? They say it's brain dead. You are on the bed. You can't function. Because your brain, that little object, don't call it white, on the inside of your body, God designed it to power this body. Power this body to function. Tells you what to do, when you do it, moves, sends messages. The brain powers your body. Once your brain dead, you're just there. You may still be breathing, you may still be there, but you can't do anything. Because your brain dead. Power to function. It's important for me to let you know that as a church, what the, the mandate from heaven is not for us to gather together Sunday in, Sunday out, and just be listening to great messages. And then we go out of the church wall and think, oh, our purpose, our primary assignment is to raise moral creatures. No, 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 no. Our primary assignment is to take the word for Jesus. But you need more to have morally sound because people out there will expect more from you in here. But my job is not to just raise you as moral creatures and then go out there, begin to say, I don't want to have anything to do with anybody. Light is useless without darkness. The power of light is in the midst of darkness and you're the light of the world. Salt is useless alone until you put it into something, then it seasons it. You are the salt of the earth. Salt in the midst of salt is useless. You're not the salt of the church. You're not the salt of the church. No, oh, no. Put salt in a bowl of salt. Is it useful? Not a pinch or a handful. Put it in there. It's nothing. But put a handful in water. Put a handful in stew. You will not even eat it. It's too salty. Am I right, Toby? It's too salty. So salt only functions outside its kind. So do you get it? Salt only functions outside, not within. Not within. Not within. And that's why I tell God, we're not doing. God wants us to do. God loves doers, not hearers. Doers. Do, do, do means powered to function. God told them, you are here to go and do. Witness, you shall be my witnesses. I will power you to be my witnesses. We become so feeble, so weakened, so timid. We do absolutely nothing. Now, think Christianity is about maintaining a holy life and that's all. No. No, no, no. You're supposed to do. You're supposed to be powered for a purpose. Powered to function. Powered to function. We must begin to think, why did God give? The anointing is not meant for you to just keep. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and the power. Who went about doing, not teaching. Doing. Acts chapter 1 verse 1. Give me Acts chapter 1 verse 1. I like it. I like that place very much. In fact, the way Apostle Luke put the book of Acts it's strange. He says, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to what? And do came before teaching. Don't you ever teach what you're not doing. Oh, Jesus, you missed that. 
Don't you ever teach what you're not doing. You don't pay tithes, you teach it. You don't live holy, you teach it. You don't do anything other than you're teaching it. Of all that Christ began to do and teach. <laughs> Christ was a doer. <laughs> not teach and do. Do and teach. Doing came before teaching. So do you get it? That's I don't understand. Some percept you are celibate from heaven. You are single. You are teaching couples how to marry. How to live in a married life. No, tell me now. Will you listen to a person? I'm 18 year old boy, 19 year old boy. I say, I want to do a marriage seminar. They will look at us and say, Excuse me? Are you married? No. I want to teach couples how to live well in their marriages. <laughs> I'm sure, but I'll soon have not attend that marriage seminar. You have not attend. How can you teach when you're not doing it? Am I communicating? Do, do. Somebody shall do. Shall do. It's an active word. We're not doers. We have centurion projects. We're not doers. I pray that God will raise doers, young people in this church that will do things. That will plan chill out. That will plan, that will plan H now. That will do things. Doers are achievers. You can't achieve in life if you're not doing in life. You cannot achieve anything if you don't do anything. You can learn, you can teach, you can be a student, but go and be an actor, a player. Go out there and do it. Powered to function. And it's because some of us don't even understand that the purpose of the spiritual, some of us don't understand, and some churches do understand this, that the natural is controlled by the spiritual. I've explained that to us a thousand times. When I say natural, spiritual, I'm not saying demons. I'm saying even the things you do. The reason we come to church, you see, there are many ways and there are many people that can power you. And I'm show you how people are powered. I would rather be powered by God. Some are not powered by God. Powered means driven. And some are powered by their inner fire, inner belly. I will show you the church where I still have time. I will show you people that are not godly, but yet powered and they function. You are godly. You're not powered, you're not functioning. And the world celebrates those that function. Not your morals. They celebrate. Even if you have morals, morals is meant to help you. Like Mandela. To stay on course. I say, I will not bow. I will not bend. I will not go to the world. I will stay in my prison for 27 years. Then we celebrated him. Why? Strength of his conviction. Courage of his conviction. Built by his morals. That this is right. This is bad. That's where morals help you. Nobody celebrates you. Hello, praise the Lord. I don't commit adultery. you. Your life is true. We want to give an award to our sister this week as the only sister in the last five years has not committed adultery. Put us together for Jesus. Give an award. Nonsense. I'm telling you. You don't commit it now. You catch it, Charlie. Your husband will divorce you. Your, your, your wife, what nonsense. You now come to his presence and say, I'm better than her. I'm better than him. Why? I uh, mean, at least I come to you for prayer meeting. He doesn't come regularly. Okay, fantastic, sir. Thank you for coming. But after prayers, what do you do? Nothing. Man. We have people, we have a big problem. We don't do anymore. We're so, and that's why we don't, we don't, we're not achieving. We're not making a difference. We're not changing the world. God knew that those 120 are useless. They have been powered. You didn't get it. They could not have achieved anything that have been powered. Immediately, God powered them. 3,000 souls came to Christ the same day. The same day. The same day. Would have been powered. Forget it. A timid man became a bold man when he was powered. Peter. 10 days ago, 13 days ago, he was just denying Christ. The moment something came upon him, he stood his ground and said, Listen, this same Jesus. He began to preach. Something happened. Everything wanted. If you look beyond spirituality or religious shows, it was powered. You must, the only way you can function well, productively, is when you are powered. Powered. You must cry. You must say to yourself, I want to be powered. Some, like I said to you, I'll show you now. Some are powered by other things. Oh, that people, people, ah, ah, 
I have you to see those boys that do ritual killing. They are powered by something called greed. Something is driving them. What they are doing is not normal. They are powered, driven by something that is demonic and satanic. Ritual killers. Love of money. I've been preaching it for years. They won't listen to me. Love. Look at where we have found ourselves in Nigeria. Look at where we are now. When preachers dedicated their pulpits to just preaching money, 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 not morals. Look at where we are. 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds killing, butchering, strangling creatures, living creatures, human beings, like chicken, looking for money. We are we're in big, big trouble. We better go back to the real purpose of the church. It's not to make money. It's to make souls. It's to change the world. Those 120 were powered by God. And they made a difference. They changed and they turned their world upside down. And they've been powered. Not at that gathering. I've been powered. And that's why, look, if you read Ephesians 2 verse 2. Give me Ephesians 2 verse 2. I like the way it says that. Because this, this Ephesians 2 verse 2 is a very loaded passage. And I want to teach you for just two minutes. All of you, please listen to me. Paul said, we are in, in time past. I want to teach it letter for letter. Time past means, watch me, before now. So Paul was talking to a church saying, before now, meaning before now means when you are not born again, when you are not in church, when you are not conscious or aware of God. In time past, you walked. So he's saying, that, okay, check how you walked then according to the course of this world. There are three things, not the flesh. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. There is a time past. There is a now. Yes or no? Yes. He's speaking to them now that you are saved. Remember that then you are walking according to the course. Course means direction of this world what we call world systems or ideologies. I'm going somewhere. Please just, just stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Ideologies means that so many of us are doing things daily or were doing things daily that we saw right according to the world system. That's what we call worldliness. Worldliness is not necessarily evil. Mm -mm, don't get on. Worldliness is not evil, though. It simply means something influenced by the world, not the Lord. There is that, there is this. So worldliness means under the influence of the course of this world. Meaning, listen to me, the world accepts this as okay. So you and I were doing it. And I'm going somewhere, that's what, so please, when I'm saying this, think social media, think TikTok, think Facebook, Oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. So the world says this is okay. No, give me that scripture. This is okay. So all of us were walking. Listen, that walking, watch me, means under the influence of the world. We had just like a stream of water. You put it there, you're just flowing. Someone say flowing. Say flowing according to the course, direction of this world. According. Eh, eh. Excuse me, I didn't see that. According to the prince of the power of the hair. Oh, oh, there's a problem here. The spirit, oh, 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 this prince is a spirit. So, 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 what Paul was saying here, very deadly, very dangerous in times past. So, we're not looking at that. This is the modern day. I'm now saved. It says in verse 1, now you are saved. You are saved by the mercies of God. You are saved by the grace of God. You are saved for a function, for a purpose. You are saved, you are saved, you are saved. But don't forget that in times past, when you were not saved, so he tried to explain this to you. I'm going somewhere. Your actions, you walked according to the course of this world. So to you, to your naked eyes, it's what's raining. It's what's trending. It's simply trending. What's the big issue? Everybody is doing it. Why can't I do it? They are wearing the wig. I can't wear that wig. They open their chest. Why can't I be naked? It's trending to be naked. 
So there's nothing wrong with it. Why? Everybody's doing it. So he says, according to the course of this world. Don't forget that. The problem now is that course of this world you are seeing is actually under according to the power. So that thing you are seeing here naturally give me, is under exactly. It's influenced by where? The spirit. Oh, you missed that. What you're seeing with your naked eyes in the world is according to the prince of the power of the air. Oh, oh, there's something in the air influencing how we do things here. Who is that thing? A spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So immediately, he says, that's where there is ritual killing in Nigeria. Do we have ritual killing in the north? No. Why south? Because in the south, we worship money. In the north, they don't. There's banditry in the north. Yeah. Ritual killers in the south, in Lagos. I've told you every city has its own prince. Lagos is a commercial city. So everything that governs Lagos is commerce. Including their churches. If this church was located somewhere in Jos, whom you will remember will not be under the influence of commerce. Because the city, the prince that controls that city is different. So he says to you then, the cause of this world, the cause of this world is also without you knowing, under the power, the prince of the power of the hair in that area. And that area is a spirit that controls the children of disobedience in that area. So without us knowing, what he's saying is this, shh, the spiritual controls the natural. Shh, that's what he's saying there. What he's saying here is spiritual controls the natural without you even knowing it. Sometimes we just flow along. Without, as I said, you are working without you being conscious. Because I was telling them that in retrospect, that you guys don't even know that what you are doing was being powered from where? Up there. Powered from somewhere you didn't see. And you're just flowing. So the things we're doing were being powered by some invisible forces. So Christ said, okay, for me to also change the same world, the course of the world too, so I can have my own people also doing this, I have to also control from the realm of the spirit. I want to empower a few people that will begin to go into the world and change the way things are done in the world and bring people to the kingdom. So they now begin to have a different contrary force. They are there, we are here. They are there, we are here. What has not happened, unfortunately, is some people there infiltrated our camp here. And we thought they are with us. They now brought their ideas into this place. Don't forget, though they are here, they are still under the influence of this. They now bring their ideas here into this place. We now start doing church like we're doing world. So we begin to struggle. We're still the same. No, I mean, what's happening? I want to do a wedding in the church. I want to go around and the pastor is saying, you have to pay me to come and conduct your wedding. And then I want to do something. I want to dress in a certain way. And they tell me this is how they do it out there. We must do it like that in here. The song we sing in here, can we change it a bit? So that we can, in trying to attract them in here, can we be like them? After all, Paul said to the Jews, I became a Jew. Can I become worldly to catch the world? Maybe there's no bad, bad idea. Because I want to catch them for Jesus. And they won't come into this place if they don't see me like them. So let me change my hairstyle. Let me not just do dreads. Let me change my dressing. Let me change everything I am. And in changing to be like them, I won't know when I become and I change my values. When Paul said to the Jew, I became a Jew, to the, to the lawless, I became lawless. No, he said, yet not without the law of God. Yet not without the law. In trying to change them, I refuse to lose my values. I tweak a bit of my methods. I would not contaminate my message. Because if care is not taken, 
I will change everything I am. Just trying to change them. And eventually they've changed me. You find out that they've changed me. Power has to function. We need to go back to our essence. We need to ask ourselves, why are we here? Why are we here? Why do we, why did God create the church? What was the purpose of the church? What was the mandate from scriptures? I'm not saying from the modern day speakers, from the scriptures. Why did he create the church? He created us to function, to work. And you must not forget that the spirit, the spiritual controls the natural. Meditate on that. Powered means to be energized. Sometimes when I'm tired and I'm working, I'm tired. I sleep to get my rest. I get what we call power nap. I ran into it many years ago. So my secretary said, Daddy, I have power nap. I'll just have my power nap. 30 minutes, I just lock my door. Power nap, I'll refresh. I just sleep for 30 minutes. I come back to work around 2 p.m., around 3 p.m., I'm back at my desk. But sometimes I don't take power nap because I have so much to do. I said, give me Red Bull. It gives me wings to fly. So, so, so my, my, my wife says to me, honey, you're taking too much Red Bull. I had to call Dickness and Gossie one day. Dickness and Gossie, yeah, you're a pharmacist, yes. What harm does Red Bull does? A little bit of caffeine, a bit of this, I say, but it won't kill me. It won't kill you. It won't hurt my livers. No, it won't. Thank you, ma'am. So, lady, give me Red Bull. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm tired. My brain is shutting down. I'm, I'm working so hard. And I found out, I don't know how. I don't know how it works like magic. Every time I take that thing, Red Bull, 30 minutes after, I feel energized, stimulated, powered. I think faster. I, I'm not advertising Red Bull. Please cut it off. <laughs> so they will not say, Red Bull has given this man some commission. But I'm just telling you what, what happens to me. So I try to power myself to function. When I see myself shutting down, I some take energy drink. That's why they tell you when you're doing sports, don't use any other thing. What do you call it? Um, steroids. steroids or stimulants. Because if you're doing that, you're powering yourself to function more than your competitor. Because you always win when you're powered. You always win. Powered. You always do better. You perform better. Performance enhancement drugs. You perform better. Because something has powered you. Time is useless to have been powered. Your phone is useless to have been powered. Your phone, that phone you hold, is useless. There's no power. Yes or no? And you carry your phone, begin to call. You can't make call. You can't receive text. You can't get the alert. Somebody may have dropped an alert of 10 million on your account. You can't know. You won't know. Because it's not powered. It's not powered. The keyboard needs to be powered to function. Everything around us has to be powered to function. No matter how good, no matter how expensive, no matter how great, it has to be what? Nobody say you're not good. You're not morally sound. Are you power to function? No matter how equipped with morals, it has to be what? Powered. So you must leave this house today and I'm going to pray that God will, and don't forget when I say God will empower you. I'm not saying to go and cast out devils. I said to go and function out there. Daniel was empowered. They functioned. Joseph was empowered. They functioned. Do you get the point now? Because you keep thinking the power means to cast out devils. No, you're getting it wrong. You're telling me that God cannot empower me to function in the marketplace. What nonsense, what insult on God. That God cannot empower you to function in business? Ah, then you don't know God. You can excel. Anywhere. Once you're powered by God. Oh yeah. That power to the ghost was not moral so. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the holiness they powered them with them. There was something that's got the power. You shall receive power. Then you will function. Then you will be witnesses. Then you will take over territories. But without that power, you can't take over. God himself acknowledged that you can't do much without me empowering you. God acknowledged it. You have, you have morals. They were all morally, morally sound creatures in the upper room. But you cannot make a difference out there without me empowering you. Do you get the point now? We have to empower you. We have to empower you. You have to have something else. Morals is great. And I want it. And I teach it. And I preach it. Raising godly people. That's our primary element. Morals. But beyond that, we don't want to raise useless people as well. I want to also raise successful people. Achievers out there. Not just godly. But they're like Bishop Blake Bishop Edouza says, heavenly conscious, earthly useless. You're heavenly conscious. And you're earthly useless. 
and God wants to be heavily useful, take territories. Every man in scripture that God used, they took territories. They took kingdoms. They overcame. You know, so to be empowered means to be enabled, to be enforced. It has to do with intensity. And that's why a church without a very strong youth structure will die. My emphasis, wisdom, she goes, welcome to church. Please let me put your hands wisdom. Pastor Wisdom is one man. This man of God, I like, I met him many years ago. I like the grace of God he carries. Let me clap for this man. You know, people, people carry different graces. Preachers, singers, the grace he carries is with so much ease. He sings, he doesn't do gira gira. And the place will be filled with the glory. We welcome you to our house again. Clap for him for me. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so very much. We're going to have him lead us into praise during the Thanksgiving session. I understand they invited him to also celebrate my birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow is my birthday, not today. Somebody sent me a birthday greeting two days ago. A friend of mine, very top person. I said, sir, this is to a wrong person, I'm sure. He said, no, Rev, is to you, but I miss the date. So I'm giving you again a birthday in advance. He said, I've noted I will greet you. I said, ah, give me a birthday greeting four days in advance. Four days, four days. Kilo day, four days. Ah, ah. Ah, 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 fast forward. Ah, ah. Uh, the man must really like me. Uh, I, said, ah, I said, Bishop, sir, you must be sending this to the wrong person because it's not my birthday today. Oh, say sorry, man of God. I, I, it was you I'm sending you to. Uh, I missed the date. So I'm going to be again in advance. And on that day, I will still greet you. I said, I said okay, thank you. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Praise God. So intensity. If you read First John chapter 2, verse 2, read First John 2, verse 2 for me. And that's why I've been speaking to young people in the church for a while. Young people, I know you people, young working class. That's the future. First John chapter 2, verse 12. Verse 12, please. It's important. I write to you, old men. He spoke about three categories of people in church. The children, the youth, and the experienced leaders. Little children, because your sins are forgiven. What this means is that you're just newly saved. So in other words, you celebrate your birth, your new birth. He just got born again. They are always rejoicing. They come out to share testimonies. I thank the Lord for the salvation of my soul. You know that kind of stuff. Those of you that are older don't say that anymore. Then after the little children in faith, these are three categories we have in church. The next verse 13. I write to you fathers because you have known him from the beginning. Do you see experience? It means that experience. Little children just knew him now. Fathers, you've known him from the beginning. You guys are more experienced. You're holder in faith. You have hate on your side. You can tell history about church. I write to you, young men and women, of course, because you have overcome the wicked one. How come he gave the strong one, the power to the youth? Not the little children, not to the fathers. He said, you have overcome the youth. Can you see now? He gave that to the youth. I write to you again, little children, because you have known the father. Then the verse 14. Now explains it better. I have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. Again, experience. I have written to you young men because you are what? You are what? Strength! Are you saying fathers are not strong? No, they were strong when they were young. Now they are fathers. They speak more of experience. Experience. I remember my youthful days. This was it. I was strong. The word of God abides you, meaning your strength is sourced from the word. So he quickly tells you the source of your strength. The word. You're strong? How? With the word. The word abides in you. Because the word abides in you, it gives you strength to fight the wicked one. And you have overcome the wicked one. Meaning you are achievers. Put your hands together, everybody. So if this is not our testimony as a church, we need to go and do a repentance. Young people should be strong. Young people should have the word. And young people should do the battle. Should fight. Should fight. Youth are the strength and the energy of every church. Youth! Youth! The strength of the church is youth. You are strong. The word abides in you. And you overcome the wicked one. You fight him. You do the battles. Nobody goes to battle with old men physically. You go with youth. Look at Ukraine. Say, young people, come out. Defend your land. Defend your state. Defend your territory. You come out. Pick up hands. Youth. In the realm of the spirit, young people should do the battle. Fight. Rise. 
defend your tell me to defend the gospel defend your faith but you must be empowered powered powered function to function God loves doers not learners very important for you to know that a church that's not powered will be a lame and a weak church powered and be honest we've got to ask ourselves are we powered to function and to function means everybody there'll be bottles here and there pockets here and there people doing things are you doing 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 not talking doing not just fellowshipping doing our fellowshipping should be to ask ourselves what are we doing the fellowshipping is not what we're doing the fellowshipping should be to discuss what we're going to do for him and for the kingdom the fellowshipping is not what we should be doing alone oh we are fellowshipping for what purpose just fellowship what are you doing everybody here young person here must ask himself or herself today this year 2022 what have i done what will make the master happy what have i done not what have i learned the purpose of learning is to do what have i done what have i done god only celebrates men that do you must do you must change from here to say oh, i go to church to learn you must do and if you've not done anything, ask yourself, what will I do before December 31st? It could be soul winning. It could be plan, plan one program. In your life, if you've not plan one, plan one. Call it Asu Night. Call it Suya Fellowship. Whatever it is, call it Talent Hunt. Whatever it is, do something. Tell somebody, do something. Do something, Nebuka. Do, do, do. You can't keep staying there doing nothing. Say you are okay. How can you wake up and sleep every night and you do nothing? For God, you must do. And that's why I'm going to release the power of God upon you now so you can do. Cars have power to move by gasoline. A car without gasoline cannot, be, cannot move. I've told you that before. Generators have power to produce. If you don't power a generator, it won't function. You must not forget that. You must be powered. Don't tell me you're a Christian. Okay, to do what? What are you doing? I go to work in the morning, I come back at night. So, what are you doing for him? Not for yourself, not to make money. For him! You must do something. You must do something. That's why God says, It is the Lord thy God that giveth the power to get wealth. Can you imagine? Even to make wealth, it gives you power. It powers you. Ah, ah. Deuteronomy 8.18 It gives you power to make wealth. Power! So imagine some people are powered to wealth, to, to get wealth. Powered. When you now see them, you don't understand how come these guys are wealthy. Because it is the Lord that God that gave you the power to get wealth. Power. Power. That power could be your talent. You can be, you can be given so much talent, like Pastor Wisdom Chico said, and it's gifted. That's what power means, enablement. It's enabled you. So you've got the power, the gift. The gift, the talent, the skill. If you don't use it, you will not get wealth. So you get the point now. If if he's dormant within you, if that is giving you the power, if he's dormant, if you don't use it, you won't get it. Power to get wealth. He won't give you wealth. It's the use of your power. What do you have? I have a rod. Drop it. If you don't drop it, it won't become a serpent. Moses dropped it, it became a serpent. Use it. If you don't stretch it out, red sea will not part. Stretched it, red supported. You're not gifted to just sit there. The gift should be used. The talent should be used. Stop blaming the church for your misfortunes. Church didn't support me. Church didn't help me. Did you? Okay, tell us what you want to do with your gift. Creative. Look, Pastor Shegun Lawal sent me a text two days ago, three. He's coming to our church in March. He's the founder of Spirit of David. Fantastic group, I've known them for 20 years. Solid, I think it's located now abroad. He's a man of God, sir. You're the first, he calls me apostle. You're the first person I want to talk to. We're coming to four or five churches that God gave me a burden to do something around creative. That church is not creativity, that church is not aware of how much we can do with the gifts and the talents we carry. So that's why the church is losing so many people to the world because right there, they now go to the world and start becoming singers, become dancers, and it's pain. Would you allow me to come to your church? Shagun, please come. I said, please, when, 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 when? He said, give me a date. I said, I'll give you tomorrow. Come, come, come. Come and teach us. He's going to be here. 
for two days, back to back workshops. One of the five churches is coming from abroad, is coming in two days. I want every young person call her, grab every youth to be here. I want to see hundreds here. Let him teach us back to back. The idea is to pick the finest of them all and to release them. Why? How come the world is doing idols? And we are sitting down doing nothing. If they do idols, we should do heroes. Yeah. If you think the word idolatry offends you, you do your own heroes. Yes, sir. And you will be like heroes of faith. Yes. So if, it, if the church is not doing heroes, I will go to the world to go and join idols. And I say, and the Christian, hey. That's why I see some Christians go to idols. And I laugh. Because some are singing, they don't sing well. They, 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 can't, they can't sing well in church. They want to go and sing when they're on idols. Have you seen them before? Go and watch YouTube. You see them there? They say, what are you singing? I'm singing the Lord today. Uh, what? Amazing grace. They are singing. Amazing grace. I'll sing. It's uh, the people are saying, please, 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 uncle. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. It, it, it's a no for me. It's a no for you too. You're not serious. Have I ever told you I can sing? I told you I can preach. Why are you complaining me with wisdom, Jesus? I'm, it's, it's better than me. How dare you come? You, you, you. I forgive you. And Dimi says, it's a no for me, sir. He's giving me no. It's not a serious man. <laughs> I've told you I know my gift. And I stay there. When it comes to singing, I don't want to try it. Because you will all run away. I have no grace in that area. What are you going to do in idols? Join church choir. You won't join church choir. To improve your voice, you go to idols and go and say, you want to show yourself. They now chase you away. You now start crying. They didn't, they didn't accept my gift. You know, gift them. Go to choir. Go to choir. Go and develop yourself in the choir. Am I right? <laughs> they, just, they just go there. They just, yeah. <laughs> Find an area of your creativity. It could be heart. It could be drama. Could be dance, could be singing, could be speaking, could be cheerfulness, could be you're all gifted somewhere. All of us, what you do with so much ease and gets result is the area of your gift. Shaking now. What you do with so much ease, without struggling, without sweating, and the results are there. That's where you're gifted. Everybody knows in this church that comrade Ben Sinwajaru is gifted in calling. He can call you, he can he's never tired. Even when you don't want to hear, he will call you again. Clap for gifted, gifted Vajero in calling. <laughs> Comrade, I don't know how he does it. One day, Pastor Fela called me from my Abuja. I said, Reverend, I said, yes, ah, it's not easy. I said, why? Today, I called 10 people. Ah, it's work, who? Oh. It's work. I said, ah, sir, how do you do it? Ah. I said, me to I struggle, me to I struggle. Fela, just like to struggle. Some people are gifted, we're not gifted. He can, this man can call 100 people, he won't be tired. I don't know how he does it. He does be calling, calling. Ah, come on, you're not tired. No, daddy, I just like it. You like calling people. Where is that grace? You just like the calling, calling. Hello, hello, how are you? Ah, don't you get tired? You, you call five people. You now come and say, daddy, I need an award. Why I call five today? <laughs> I want, I want for calling five people. Go ask him, comrade. Five people, I should give you an award? <laughs> Praise God. Find what you love to do. You enjoy doing it. And with so much ease, and you get results. That's the area of your gift. Do it more. That is where you are powered. You find wealth will follow you. You find things follow you. Because since you're using it, something is happening to life of people. People start following you for what you're doing. Some people just do stuff better than others. Sandra likes TikTok. I've never had TikTok before. She's doing my TikTok. Said I do TikTok every day. What is TikTok? I'm not a bushman. I'm simply not your generation. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed of it. They, they're ticking and they're talking. They're ticking and they're talking. <laughs> they're talking. And for her, it's fun. For me, it's work. If I try to do it, I will be breathing after two hours. <sighs> I try today. <sighs> I've tried today. For them, it's fun. Six hours enjoying doing it find what you like to do. So don't forget, people are powered by God. But let me just round up. The first thing about being powered is you must know how people are powered, Pastor Gary. Jesus himself spent time in prayers to be empowered to function. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 14. He returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. 
You must be powered. Christ could not have functioned without being powered. And I'm serious. Everything on earth that functions is powered somehow. Powered. Find what you must say God should power you. The cameras are powered. The ca Caleb said to, to Moses, give me this mountain. I want to go and conquer. I, I pray that God will give us energy in this church. I like people that have high energy. People that want to do things. I just like them. I like them. That's I like those that sing in the altar. Some people are fantastic. I'm sure you know that. Fantastic backup people. If you put the wrong person to go and back up. MD Ike. Where's MD Ike? I beg. You know I've told you before in private. Let me tell you in public. Don't put a wrong person to back up for us. As they're backing up, we're sleeping. Because they're not gifted in that area. So my gifted in the choir. Some are gifted to be back up. Some are gifted to old man to be lead vocalist. And when they do it, people are inspired. So people will be dancing like, like uh, Nancy. And you want to dance. You look at the person backing up. You are looking at you and saying, hey, they, they are doing like this. If you want to do this. You are like that. You are enjoying it. You are, you are in the mood. You are in the groove. You can't stand and you say, you are backing up and you are making me want to sleep. Powered. You people here should power us to praise God. You didn't get it. You should what power us to praise him. It's something you do, we all begin to do that. Praise God. How people are powered in life. Some are powered by God. I want to be powered by God. Today I'm going to ask God to empower you all, to release you, to function. I'm going to pray a prayer. And I'm going to ask the power of the Most High to come upon you, to fall upon you, to do that which you never knew you could do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And you're going to say amen when I pray that prayer for you. All because it's a serious, simple prayer. Lord, I shall release your sons and daughters. I release them with your power from on high. To go out to the world and do things that only you can enable them to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Powered to function. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Those that don't know, like my friend says, Tony Akiyemi, shall, shall not be strong and shall be exploited. Tony said it was a Tony that was fantastic. He said the people that know their God shall be strong. Those that don't know their God shall be weak and be exploited. That's why we have so many church members exploited by some other pastors. Exploited! Because they don't know God. Exploited! They don't do exploits. Powered to function. Now, some people are not born again. They're not born again. Mark Zuckerberg and others. But they're doing great things. They're powered by something. It's called inner fire. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. That's what it says there. Ephesians 3 20. People don't know it. It's not saying, look read for me Ephesians 3 20. So you can be powered eh, by some inner desire. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask with him according to the power of God. No, not, not power of God. No power of God. Because well, there's a power that worketh within us. No, God's power is what is able. Not that it is able. That God is powerful to do. But there's something in you that must also be doing. So some of them can just power on their own. There should be inner fire, inner belly. There's something here in your belly. Something in you just driving you. Driving you. Driving you. This. That was what happened to Moses. He had just felt I needed to do something. I have to do something. Moses, the Bible says in Acts chapter 7, verse 22, 23, it came into his heart. He just saw injustice. This is nonsense. I can't continue. It can't. God had not spoken to him. The first time he heard God's voice was when he was 80 years old. But by 40, something knocked on his heart. There was something here calling him about his destiny. Moses was learned in all wisdom of Egypt, was mighty in words and in deeds. Look at verse 23. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart. What is it? What was it in? It came. Something just knocked on the inside. Something on the inside. This is not right. Injustice. And there's inner fire. There's something in my belly saying I should do something about what I'm seeing. He had not heard God's voice here. He had, it wasn't a dream. Something just came on the inside. Bam, bam, knocking. Bam, bam, saying no. Let me do something about what is up there. I don't I want to get more. All these nightclubs open up. Can we not close nightclub? How can we just go out? Let's do something for Jesus. Let me do something. It came into his heart. Something was knocking there. Knock, knock. Who is it? Destiny. And he didn't know that, that was his destiny. 
He had no clue. But something was knocking. 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 He hid the voice. Landed him in trouble. Went on exile. Why? Injustice. The first thing he faced in exile was what? Another act of injustice to a woman and some men. Did Moses stop doing what was he? No. He went again. The guy just had trouble. He went again to solve a problem. And this time, he got a wife. That was how he got his wife. He didn't stop obeying his knock on the inside. There's a knock on your inside. You, you've stopped obeying it. And the first time I did it, the pastor did not appreciate me. Hey, sit there then. Keep following your knock. Something is knocking on your inside. The first time you did it, you failed. Do it again. Do it again. Moses did it the first time. He failed. It landed him in trouble. He ran into exile. He got to exile. He saw another exact similar act of injustice. He defended the woman that ended up being his wife. He was not doing it to get a wife. He was simply doing it because something was knocking. This is the right thing to do. Somebody shout, do. Do. Don't stop doing because somebody has not appreciated you. Keep doing. You'll be surprised what will come out of what you do the next time. You never can tell. Your wife could just be the one you get. When I say wife, not physical. Something that would change your entire life. And that thing changed his entire life. Yes or no? Put your hands together for Jesus. So, either powered by God or powered by passion. Powered by God or powered by inner passion, inner fire. Some are powered by greed, not need. You know that. Balaam was a prophet driven by greed. Hayab was a man that also had greed and he was greedy for Naboth's land. Gehazi was a young man in ministry who went to take bribe from Naaman and was powered by greed. So, so many people are powered by greed, not need. The things we are going for, we don't need them. We just, we're just greedy. Don't be powered by greed. Don't be powered by greed. Some are powered by love. Oh, man, I like this. Love and compassion. This is not powered by God, just love. That's why you have the story of Julius, Caesar, Romeo and Juliet. You know, Jesus was moved and powered by compassion. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, just moved, powered by compassion. You see people, you just have genuine love. Not because of what you get from it. You just have love. Look at these young people. Look, we're doing what is it now, Timothy College. Because I love people to go to school. Let's help them. He was moved with compassion. That was moved, was powered. So the action was moved by compassion. What you saw was driven, powered by compassion. Just love people. Let's help people. Let's pay school fees. Let's send them to school. Let's do jam classes for them. Say, so what are you getting from it? Nothing. Nothing. Why are you doing it? Compassion. Empathy. What, must you get something from everything you do? Must you? Must you get something from it? Can't you do something without expecting anything in return? That's Christianity. That's charity. That's love. That's agape. Do something without expecting anything back. Just help people. Let's help people. Let's feed the poor, clothe the naked. Let's open our clinics again. Let people just come to the place and then get in to see doctors. Do something powered by love. Powered by love. There was a man that was powered by love. The other love. The other love. Not this one. Jacob. Jacob served for a woman for 14 years. That guy is the best lover in the Bible. The best lover. 18, 14 years. I like the way the Bible puts it. Go to. Go to Genesis chapter 29. I like that for verse 15 to 20. Especially verse 20. Genesis 29. 14 years. He first started before seven years. They gave him uh, the wrong woman. He sat around that seven, seven years. Go to verse 20. I like that verse 20. And Jacob served seven years more for Rachel. And they seemed unto him, but what? Eh? Why? What kind of love is that one? Eh, you see? Thank you, sir. It's there it is. If today a man does it, they will say, Now, Juju. Yes or no, women? Yes, yes or no, women? They will say, No, no, yeah, that, that girl has charmed him. No, it's not, it's not no, seven years, seven years. Ah, what, what, what is she? She's the only one. Ah, ah, seven years, seven years. And it seemed to him but a few. How can seven years be like a few days? I still don't understand it. I still don't get it. Seven years you spend in university to become a doctor. 
Four years to become an engineer. Five years. Seven years. A child of seven years is like this now. For one woman. One woman. Love. Eh? Love. Powered by love. Powered. He was in love. Powered by love. You know, you know, you know me, I was thinking one day, I said, ah, seven years. Even if I saw that girl at 23, she'll be 30. And it was 14 years. 37. Ah, ah, what kind of love is that? You know, the time you met her, you liked that. She was 23. And you. And it's okay. We have seven years. 30. Ah, ah. And that's. What kind of love is that? That guy was powered by love. It's not the kind of love you boys have today. You cannot, you cannot even love for one year without asking for sex. You people, your generation, three months, you're asking for sex. Three months. Lost. Not love. Powered and driven by lust. <laughs> hey! And it seemed to him, but for a few. Why? For the love he had for her. That's what scripture. For the love he had for her. Chicken. The love he had for her. He's laughing. Don't, it's not me. MD Ike, your wife is laughing. I don't know why. MD Ike, your wife is laughing. Maybe she's saying, hmm, when we get done, hey, you must be bad again now. Ah, we'll go start. This is our seven years journey. <laughs> it's not me. Oh. It's, you, are, you are here. You are witnesses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the Bible. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. That's the Bible says, many waters cannot quench love. That kind of love, it can't. When you're powered by that kind of love, many waters cannot quench it. Finally, of course, some people are powered here by ideologies. And that's the most dangerous one if it's a wrong ideology. Some people, their actions are powered by some ideology. And if it's a wrong one, it's a dangerous one. I'm telling you. That's why the social media is very strong. Because social media is forming ideologies today. Feminism is an ideology. And it's been pushed and propagated with those handles. And some men, and some women, are beginning to be powered by those ideologies. So the actions they take, without them knowing they are resisting men, they are fighting their husbands, they are fighting the man, uh, males, and they say, no, we don't want to be under control. Without you knowing, you're powered by some strange ideology of women liberation, not women empowerment. I believe in women empowerment. It's just for women independence or liberation that we don't need men. An ideology. Be very careful. Be very careful with what you do. Ideology backing and powering you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want you to do something for me today, after today's service, to leave this church auditorium with one mind. That Lord, I pray that you power me. I don't want to be powered by wrong ideologies. Power me. I want to function out there with unction. The purpose of the unction, first John chapter 2, verse 28. Is to function. The purpose of the anointing is to do how God anointed Christ, who went about doing. It's not just to carry without doing. Help me to do and mention one thing. This one thing I do. Paul said, This one thing I do. Leave this altar to say, I will do one thing, just one thing. I'll write a book to say, Write a book. I'll write a hymn book. Write something. Do something with your talent. Don't bury it. Don't hold it. Do something with your talent. Jump to your feet. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Power to function. I want to pray for everybody. I want you all to bow your heads and pray. I want you to spend two minutes to just pray for yourself first. The Lord help me to be powered. I receive your power. I want to do out there in the world. I want to function. I want to do exploits. I'm tired of just being around and not doing anything. I want to make an impact. I want to change. I'm going to go to the media department and do things there. I will go to children's church and do things. I will make an impact. Something that's never been done before. I will go to the prayer ministry and I will do something. I will join the evangelism. I will do something. I will be those that will make sure that we all our visitors integration ministry. I will do something. I will go to the choir. I will do something. I want to do us to pray. I want do us to pray. I want you want to be a doer. Say, God, I want to be a doer. I want doers to pray. I want doers to pray. Can you please pray and say, I want to do something. I want to do. I'm tired of just being there. I want to be power to function. I must do something. I must. I have to. I just have to do something. Just have to do something. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your sons and daughters here present. I lay my hands on them. Hand of strength. 
I pull out my hand of strength upon this house. I ask, oh God, I call into the power that walketh in the air. Not the wrong one, Lord. I ask that you release your power and your grace upon your people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I ask you, drive us. You empower us and you power us to function. In the name of Jesus. Power us with new ideas. Inspire us, oh God, with new drive. In the name of Jesus. I pray that all young people here will look at within themselves. Let the inner fire, inner passion rise in the name of Jesus. Your word says we should stir the gift that is within us. I pray every man, I pray every woman will look within and begin to stir the gifts that they carry in the name of Jesus. For those that don't know their gifts, reveal to them, Holy Spirit. Reveal so to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you praise, glory. I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus.